Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. I have been using the same wireless router for two or three years now, uh, a Linksys that I had flashed to some open source firmware that I've talked about in the past. And it, it worked for the most part. Uh, it wasn't broken, not by any stretch of the imagination, had no real issues with it. And then recently, uh, when CompUSA was going out of business, I picked up a wireless N gigabit router. Uh, the W, let me see if I get this straight. I'm looking right here at the web configuration page. WRVS4400N, and it is, I would say, a prosumer level uh, router, wireless. Uh, gigabit. I mean, it's all. It's got all the buzzwords jam packed in there. VPN is in there as well. Uh, there are certain things about it that I like, and certain things that I don't like. Uh, but for the most part, it's been an absolute solid upgrade. Uh, even though I wasn't expecting the signal strength for the antenna to be as strong, I'm certainly getting better signal. Uh, my network seems to be flowing faster, and not just because I'm on a, a gigabit network, but certainly because I've got a wireless N cards inside at least my Max, and in the, in the Max, uh, that's been, you know, immediate, the, the speed, especially when I'm browsing local files. Now, speaking of Max, uh, when I was looking in my router at all the connected machines on this particular router, uh, I noticed the client host name, one of them said, unknown, and I was like, uh, why is it unknown? What's I know all these other ones here. I know Vista 32. I know iSwitch. I know Linksys PAP, Socrates, Isis X, my Slingbox, Icarus. What the hell is unknown? Well, I had its IP address, and more specifically, I had its MAC address. And MAC address in this context does stand for Media Access Control, not like a MAC which is short for Macintosh, that's just a shortening of a word. So when you see someone typing in all caps MAC, they should be referring to media access control or a string of hexadecimal, uh, well, a hexadecimal code uh, that uh, will identify a particular machine, a particular device, a particular item that may or may not be on a network, uh, and in this case, an unknown item. So I had its MAC address, all caps MAC, not MAC for talking about an Apple laptop. Anything can have a MAC address, not just an Apple, not just a MAC. A PC can have a MAC, a, Mac, a PC does have a MAC address, at least if it has a network card or any kind of connectivity. So now, oh yes, thank you, Caboose. I appreciate that clarification. Uh, actually, I would I would capitalize Mac for Macintosh since it's a proper noun, but I, I think we got the point. Thank you for putting a, a finer point on it, though. So I wanted to find out. I'm like, what is this unknown thing? Well, I do know there are websites, resources out there that can help you identify um, these devices based on their MAC address. So I copied the MAC address down, went over to coffer.com, C-O-F-F, er.com. It's just a free tool. I mean, there, there are plenty of ways that you can identify the MAC address. Uh, typed it in, and then it looked up the vendor, or the, the company that created that particular machine. And in this case, uh, the prefix was 00125A, and that vendor is Microsoft. So I started thinking, well, what kind of devices do I have on the... Oh, the Xbox 360, because Ponzi turned it on the other day. Uh, to watch um, a DVD, and of course, when she did, it was connected to the network, and so it identified and all that junk. And so that helped me identify. I'm like, okay, so I'm. I went down. I looked at the Xbox, and lo and behold, that was its MAC address. Now, you're saying, well, why would I, you know, bother doing that? Well, if I didn't know what machine that was, I could have been guessing. Was it my Sony? Was or my PSP? I should say. Was it this device? Was that device? Was it this computer? Or was it just a computer that I didn't know of? Uh, this helped me narrow down the field. Uh, in in every like I said, you know, you could look on the back of, of just about any kind of device that can get connected to the internet, and in many cases, it will have its MAC address printed right there, front and center. And that, of course, you can use for troubleshooting purposes because in most router setups, you can limit 
the, who accesses your network based on their MAC address. So you can either say only these MAC addresses are allowed to access my network or vice versa. These MAC addresses are specifically not supposed to access my network. And then you may have heard of MAC address spoofing. And what that is, uh, and I had to set this up when I had a Comcast business service, um, they only allowed one MAC address to access the internet. So I had my modem plugged into my router and I said, my I told my router, I said, okay, I'm going to reconfigure the MAC address you were given and I'm going to say you have this MAC address. So I spoofed its MAC address so that Comcast would allow the entire network to access the internet, not just the computer that it was set up on that had that specific MAC address. So MAC address spoofing can be helpful. Uh, in, in that in that case, uh, I, I I went around the rules, so to speak. Uh, of course, I let them know. I said, "Look, this is what I'm doing," and I guess it's par for the course. I said, "I'm just a home office kind of guy. Uh, it's impractical for me to you know purchase eight, you know eight different internet connections for my entire house, and I'm certainly not going to pay for a substandard wireless access point given to me by an ISP. No way, no how." So uh, anyway, if anybody else has any uh, good home networking tips or specifically with working with MAC addresses, um, you know, uh, always open to learning something new. Appreciate any kind of email you can send, chris at perillo.com. I do read every email. I can't respond to every one of them. So if I do not respond to your email, I did see it. I guarantee I saw it. Well, unless the spam filter caught it. But for the most part, I, I, pr I probably saw it. Uh, and of course, you're welcome to swing by the chat room too, anytime, day or night. Uh, I may not be in there or paying attention to the chat room, but plenty of people are, and they're absolutely fantastic. I love hanging out with these people every day, and I'm going to miss them when I go travel to Germany. Uh, I'm not going to have as much access uh, that week, and so I have a feeling we're going to have to find a Perillo surrogate for a while. Uh, I don't know. I don't think anybody can replace me, nor would they want to. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm crazy that way. And you're welcome to join a, a, the bunch of crazies here. Uh, we're live online 24 hours a day, seven days a week on uh, one website, specifically one chat room at live.perillo.com. We'll see you later.